Are you looking to spice up your math lessons with a burst of color and a little bit of fun? Today is your lucky day. In this video, I am sharing a fantastic free lesson idea that is perfect for first and second grade classrooms. We are currently diving into the world of non-standard measurement, and we're going to be using everyone's favorite candy, Skittles. So get ready to add a dash of sweetness to your math lessons as I walk you through a full guided math lesson covering non-standard measurement from start to finish. Standard and non-standard measurement are two different approaches used to measure objects. Standard measurement uses units such as inches and centimeters and uses tools such as a ruler or maybe even a yardstick. Non-standard measurement involves non-traditional units using a variety of sizes such as paper clips, unifix cubes, or even skittles to measure the length, width, and height of various objects. This approach encourages creativity and exploration in measurement and helps our kids develop a deeper understanding of this concept. Now, when first introducing non-standard measurement, we actually create an anchor chart as a class together so that we can learn the rules. As we are creating our whole group chart, the kids are also creating a mini version of the same chart in their math journals. This allows them to have it as a reference to look back on and use during their independent work. First, we want to make sure and pick an object to use as our measurement tool. They need to be the same size and the same tool. We don't want to be measuring an object using different tools such as a paper clip and a unifix cube. Next, you always want to start at the edge of the object and measure from the beginning to the end. And then our third step is to make sure that we have no gaps or overlaps with our measurement tools. I would model and show them exactly what this looks like. As you are providing examples throughout your unit, model incorrectly sometimes and let them catch your mistakes. Last, we always want to make sure that we are measuring with our tools in a straight line. We don't want them to be wonky or uneven then our measurements won't turn out right. Some of my favorite tools for measuring with non-standard units are unifix cubes, large and small paper clips, coins, and food items such as goldfish, M&Ms, Skittles. And then use items that you have laying around your classroom, such as pipe cleaners or sentence strips to practice measuring with various objects. Now, I just mentioned that I like to measure with food items. Kids will do just about anything for a Skittle. And so today, I am going to walk you through a guided math lesson from start to finish, reviewing a non-standard measurement activity using Skittles. Now, if you aren't familiar with the guided math framework, I have plenty of content here on my channel and on my website to help get you caught up. Here is a breakdown of what the lesson plan looks like. At the top, you have your daily objectives followed by the vocabulary words you need to make sure you're gonna cover for that lesson. And then you have all the materials listed out of things that you are going to need. So with this lesson, first we're gonna start with our math warm up. All of my guided math units include a math warm up. It's part of the guided math framework. These are typically meant to be a spiral review of previously taught skills. They're typically not pencil to paper tasks and they allow your students to think critically. This is actually the one that we did today and it is the one that is included in the free lesson. We started out, I wrote 11 minus three is equal to eight plus four. And then I made a T chart that says agree or disagree. I asked my students, I said, okay, I want you to look at this 11 minus three and eight plus four. I didn't give them any kind of guidance. I didn't have the answer shown. We didn't discuss anything. I gave them a minute or two before I revealed the answer. I had each kid come up and they just put a tally mark, whether they agreed or they disagreed. Then once everyone had tallied their decision, then I kind of mapped out the thinking process. So we solved 11 minus three is eight, and then eight plus four is 12. And we talked about how these two numbers 
are not equal. I actually let a couple of kids come up, they explained their thinking, they explained why they chose their answer. It took just a couple of minutes and it got their brains thinking about math critically before we started our measurement lesson. If you had time, if you wanted to continue this, you could easily do this same idea using two addition problems. You could do two subtraction problems. You can change it up to meet the level of your kids. For your whole group lesson, your kids are gonna need a copy of the candy shop measurement recording sheet and a set of small candies such as Skittles or M&Ms. We're gonna use Skittles in these examples. And what I like to do is do the first couple of problems with them and then try to have them do the rest independently. This particular activity would be one that we would do after they've already been introduced to the concept of non-standard measurement and it isn't something that's brand new to them. So they should have some familiarity to it. So let me show you how this would work. Each kid is gonna need a copy of the candy shop measurement recording sheet and a set of Skittles. They are going to use their candies to measure the line on the recording sheet. We're gonna practice starting the candy at the beginning of the line. And as you're modeling, making sure that you're not leaving any gaps, you could ask kids, hey, what did I do wrong? Does my measurement seem correct? What do I need to do to fix it? And it would be that we have gaps. So they need to scoot their candies closer together. Then we would count and write the length inside the candy circle. Here we used four Skittles. You could also have them estimate and guess what they think the length of their line is going to be. Let's pretend here we, I know that just to here is four, so maybe I might guess that it is going to take 10. Let's find out. And as I'm modeling, I might do things the wrong way. So here you can see I'm not making a straight line. I'm gonna make it kind of curvy. And I'm gonna see if kids can actually catch what it is that I am doing wrong when it comes to measuring. So they're gonna measure out all the way to the end of the line. Once they have it, then it can be time for them to count their measurement. This line is 15 Skittles long. Then the process is just going to repeat with the remaining measurement lines that you have on your paper. This should take no more than 15, 20 minutes at the absolute most. Then you wanna move on to independent practice. Now for independent practice, they are gonna be doing the exact same skill, the exact same concept that we just did all together in the whole group lesson, but they're gonna apply it independently. And they're gonna be doing this in their math journals. I actually have two different versions of this draw and measure activity. One is going to involve Skittles, where they are going to draw a line that is five Skittles long under the flap. Or I also have a more generic version of this activity where they can use cubes. So just depending on the level of your students and what tool you want them to use. So let me show you how this one would work. You're gonna have your kids cut out the draw and measure box and then they will cut out on along the horizontal lines to make flaps in their journal. Depending on what time of the year you are teaching this lesson to your first or second grade students. In second grade, they're already pretty independent, so they can easily 
cut and insert this into their journal themselves. If you are maybe beginning of the year first grade, I might have things pre-cut. Under each flap, they are going to follow the directions. So it says draw a line that is five Skittles long with a green crayon. They'll lift up their flap and I would encourage them to line them up where they can actually trace a line. But this is also why I provided the cube option as well. Once they have their five Skittles lined up, then using their green crayon, they can draw their line to match. This next one says, draw a line that is one Skittle long using a yellow crayon. So they'll swap the flap. They have one Skittle. They're gonna draw a line that is one Skittle long and it repeats. The next one, draw a line that is four Skittles long with a red crayon. And they'll continue to do this independently until they've solved all of the problems in their journal. Then the last part is going to be the small group activity. How my guided math units work is that each small group lesson lasts for two days because typically you are not going to see all your groups on one day. So the small group lesson changes every other day. For this lesson, your kids are going to need the desired recording sheet and then a set of pipe cleaners. You can see here, I just took different pipe cleaners and I cut them into various lengths. I added a piece of tape at the end and I labeled them with the numbers one through eight. There are different recording sheet options. You can assign a kid a particular pipe cleaner to measure. You can have them choose their own. That is going to be completely up to you. So let's say this kid has number three. They are going to measure the length of their pipe cleaner using paper clips and cubes. They will measure the object and then they will record their measurement. So this is pipe cleaner number three. They would record it here in box three under cubes. Then they would repeat the same process using paper clips or whatever tool you have them using. This will repeat until they have solved all eight measurement pipe cleaners. Really simple, very low prep. There you have it. You can grab this entire lesson that I just modeled, sent straight to your inbox. You're gonna get the Skittle activities, you're gonna get the pipe cleaner game, you're gonna get the journal activity and some more. Just click on the link that's in the description of this video. You can head there and have it printed and ready to go in just a few minutes. If you found this video helpful, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. And then I wanna give you one last reminder. I am presenting at the Educator Summit again this June. My session is actually gonna be all about addition with regrouping strategies, but there's gonna be loads of K through third grade content. You can earn PD hours and college credit hours too, and the price for the summit is getting ready to go up soon. So I'm gonna add the link with my discount code in the description so that you can save off of your purchase ticket. I hope I will see you there. As always, if you've got questions, leave me a comment below and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.